brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. Welcome to MATC, as we call it for short, here in CR, or Cabin Radio, as we call it for short, or in just ER, as we call radio for short. Wheeler and Ollie with you on your Tuesday morning. Taco Tuesdays down here at Cabin Radio. Come buy a toque, get a free taco. Uh, Lecter's making them this morning. Uh, I believe, I believe he's filling them with egg and chorizo sausage. Good morning. Morning, Jay Dolly. How are you? Very good, O.W. Ow. 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 That's very good. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed the... my initials. <laughs> yes, it's very good. Um, I enjoyed my 45-minute uh, sleep in yesterday, so thank you very much for that. As always, um, it did not make a difference. Uh, the rest of my day was very tiresome. This is day two of me uh, single parenting a small puppy. That's right. Sarah's away this week. Sarah is away this week. So she she made it through the whole night in her crate with just one uh, one needing to get up last night, mm-hmm. like the night before last. Sorry. Yep. Uh, last night, a couple more than that. A little bit more antsy. Three o'clock, four o'clock was a bit of a disaster zone. If we're honest, I woke up again at six fifteen with the dog like on my head no, in the bed. Oh, that's adorable, though. So that, I love it when they do that. That's the end of that discipline and, that's right. and all that excellent training. Yeah, that's at great. four o'clock in the morning, she wouldn't go out to sleep. I gave up, and we snuggled for two hours. Yeah. Well, see, then she's young, though, so that training will like, pop right back in there. <laughs> Betty, Betty's getting to the point now where we have to like really sit her down and really teach her some stuff. We don't, but we are getting to that point. I do remember when she was uh, small enough to crawl up above my head on top of the pillow. She's too big for that now. Yeah. Too big. They grow you so still, fast. Still try? Yeah, sometimes. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Mornings at the Cabin. Wheeler and Lecter with you. Ollie is in the other room. Tip, tap, tap it away. That's what he does. Hey, how's it going? Oh, good, buddy. How are you? Not bad. Right on. Pigeon uh, pie? Pigeon Yeah, God, see, this is the thing. Okay, we were talking about GOT, obviously. <laughs> it's spilling over. It's spilling over. It has to, because uh, I wasn't here yesterday, so I have to talk about it. Uh, what happened on <laughs> Sunday. Um, and you are waiting till tonight to watch it with your brood of friends. Yes. Uh, which is very cute. I'm so glad you have so many great friends in your life. Dude, and um, nice. So fake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what I was mentioning... Is that you guys are getting together and like it? It, it is lovely. I mean, obviously, I wish I had people in my life that I cared about enough to watch a really great show with. I don't. Um, but getting everyone together uh, uh, to watch the show is great. I mean, having a watch party, but you're waiting two days, which is such a challenge because I mean, I wanted to watch it the second it started, right? And even I had to wait a few hours because Phoenix was at rehearsal, so I had to wait till ten, and it was on at seven. How did you do it? I slept. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you. What I was saying today is like, like, or just now, is that you're going to have this watch party. Everyone's going to get together, you know, bring some drinks and probably bring some food. Like, you're a very chilly. You're a very, uh, chilly. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Garlic bread. All right. Oh, I got to start be being great. nicer to people. Right. That sounds great. Right? Um, I am nice to people. <laughs> Stop saying that to everyone. Um, so, uh, I mean, I was saying, just as we were coming out, it's like, oh, everyone's going to bring their food. Someone's going to bring pigeon pie or, you know, whatever. And you're like, what's pigeon pie? And I'm like, you... Don't even need to wait to watch the show. You haven't even watched the rest of it yet. Like, you're all caught up, and you don't even know who you're watching. Wait, what are you talking about now? Oh, God. Is this about me not following the plot? Following the plot, the characters, or the general themes? I'll have Game you Thrones. know. Oh, uh, yeah? We watched the last episode of season seven. Yeah. Last night, again. Oh, yes. Very good. We, we, we Just caught to up prepare. on the season seven as well. We did the same thing. Yeah. We watched the entire season. So I'm ready like to go. Six episodes on Saturday night because that's what my Saturday night was because I couldn't move. I named like three characters out of the blue mm-hmm. without any prompting Name from Nicole. Name them now. Uh, Braun. Okay. R- Ramsey. Yeah. Ramsey's not in season seven. No, but we were talking about previous stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were talking about- Ned Stark. And we were talking about how awful the, the Reek, the Reek storyline is. Oh, it's 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 it's, it's the worst terrible. thing ever. It is. It's it's pretty awful. Yeah, and Reek. There we go. Yeah, and Reek. Yeah, yeah. What's his real name? There you go. Starts with a T. So glad you guys are like all getting together to Tiburon. Watch a show. Sonata. Constantly stopping it and asking questions. Who's that? Why did they say that? Why is this happening? 
There's dragons? Tiberis. Tiberis. <laughs> it's not far off. Tis, tis, ti, t- tiesto. Yeah, Tiesto. DJ Tiesto. Tiesto Hernandez Joy. Right. Um, yeah, that's his name. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, so I'm ready to go. Obviously, I'm just uh, I'm just teasing you. It's just the entitlement is what bothers me the <laughs> most. <laughs> is that like you guys are getting together, which is great. Again, not jealous of having friends. Um, well, I would say how remarkably easy it actually was yesterday to get through the day without having anything I'm about spoiled. to make it a lot harder. Uh, <laughs> Ollie gave the Vegas Game of Thrones uh, season eight, episode one recap of all time. Ooh, yesterday. Vegas Game of Thrones. That sounds fun. <laughs> Vegas. Oh, Vegas. <laughs> I sang the music in the background. It was lovely. Yeah. Good time was had by all. Oh, good. He, uh, his his recap points were as follows. Mm-hmm. There was a different starting yep. with new buildings. It was, yeah. Comes and, out of the north. And a lot of people uh, a lot of people moved around. A lot of people moved around. Some people but moved it all from one place. One space. It's basically everyone coming together at Winterfell is the, episode, is the first episode. Okay, go, no, just take it easy. And there are some scenes that mirror the first episode. Okay, take it easy. I don't remember what happened. John Snow's there. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's the first time people have seen dragons in Winterfell in in hundreds of years. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, okay stop there. Okay, stop. I will stop. Stop. Um, it's winter. It when winter is come. Yes. Yeah, winter is uh, I'm, I'm up to that point. That's yeah. right. Okay. Um, there are some reunions. Okay. I will say this. No. I will say this. Don't say that. There is one reunion. That okay, so most don't reunions, say that. No, most reunions have big swelling music. It's a big emotional moment. Uh-huh. There's one reunion in this show in in the episode that you would expect that. And there's to happen, no music, and there's no music or very little music, which to me underscores the tension mm. between these characters. Okay, yeah, and what might happen? They're gonna so turn on each other. Tiberius. Tiberius and, and Thwansane <laughs> are not. They are at odds. Ooh. Yeah. Tension. Yeah. Okay. Thwan- right. Thwansane Beetleborg. No, that's a Harry <laughs> Potter. That's a Harry Potter reference. Oh, is that a different series? Yeah, that is. The, yeah, yeah. the two different. Okay. That's right. Very different. God. I just hate you. No, I'm joking. I don't hate you. I love those Game of Thrones glasses. Those are so cool. What <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> uh, that lightning bolt scar is just iconic. It's iconic. Yeah. Iconic. Um, I, okay, I will say one more thing. Oh. I will say one more thing. Um, um, <laughs> it's a great episode. It's a, it's a pretty good episode. Cool. It's, Can't it's, wait. It's solid. Sets up everything. Lovely. Um, and uh, only one person dies. Oh. In the entire episode. Okay. And it's Beric Dondarrion. Boom! Sorry, I had to get one spoiler in there. You don't even know who that is. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast where we cut out all the great music and you're left with the rest. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Yeah? Would you like some breakfast? Coffee, maybe? No? I should get out? All right, I'll get out. Um, Ollie, you have a little something you want to talk about. Um, Bell uh, Mobility, uh, Bell of Canada, not usually considered the, the best uh, of companies uh, <laughs> when it comes to service or, you know, charging people for things. But you've got something that might turn that tide. Jelaine Debogorski. Yes. Friend of the station. I po- saw this post. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Posted last night. Yes. And I spoke to her about it and said, hey, can we talk about this on the air? She said, yeah, go for it. Uh, she said, today, and I'm quoting now from her post. Yes. I called Bell Mobility and told them that the reason I had 23 bucks in overage charges was because I was going through a mental health dip and was using my phone and data more heavily as a means to stay connected to my support system. And since they claim to give a bleep about mental health, I think they should take those charges off my bill. They did. Well, I'm grateful for that. Maybe don't abuse it, but if something similar happens, make that request. Hmm. That, is, that is very nice. Yeah. I'm nice. surprised. I uh, genuinely <clears throat> reading that. I was waiting for the punchline to be. <laughs> yeah, like, no, they hung up on me. They hung up on me. me. Yeah, because to- obviously they told me to get over it. The subtext for all of this is obviously Bell. Let's talk, and the fact that they sponsor a day of talk about mental health every year and a bunch of associated initiatives. So you can see why someone would phone up and say, "Well, all right, I've got some some issues yeah. right now. Like, can you help me out?" The fact that the answer was yes, absolutely, we can. Is pleasantly surprising. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It's a nice. It's a nice uh, 
Very hard to negatively spin, but let's it's a, see you try. It's a nice version of that story. It is. No, because I mean, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people have tried that and have been told no. Do you think have a been, lot of people have tried that? I think maybe. Maybe. I mean, well, what, she, what she's saying is that, like, don't don't abuse it. Absolutely. Yeah. And people might because, I mean, people go over their data on a monthly basis because right. we have the most expensive data and we have, like, the least amount of data for the most uh, most money. Mm. So people go over their data every every month. We do, too. Um and I've and I've called them and been like, listen, this was the situation. Obviously, it wasn't that situation. It was like it was this. We were stuck out of in a place with no internet access. Blah blah blah. And I've been told like, well, sorry, like that's that's too bad. So it's nice that it it worked out for her. Right. I I imagine that it hasn't worked out as much for other people. And with Bell being so upfront or at the forefront of of mental health awareness and having Bell Let's Talk Day and all those things. That's a, that's a nice story that it happened. It happened for Julaine, and and uh, I hope it happens for other people. And yeah, like she said, I hope other people don't abuse it. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I'm not trying to make it negative, Ollie. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I mean, there's two sides. Ollie. There are there are two sides to every every thing we talk about. So yeah, um, yeah, there are there may be people that take advantage of it, and there may be people that are just like, eh, yeah. That's that's really too bad that that happened, but yeah. I mean, you still used your phone a, a bunch, and you need to pay for it. Yeah, the, I mean, the bigger part of it is that we pay so much, so for people to actively remain in contact with their support systems, they have to go over their data. Yeah. Meanwhile, you can get like Australia or in the UK, you can get unlimited data for like forty bucks a month, probably less in the UK. In the, U- in the in the US, it's forty bucks a month for unlimited de- unlimited data. And so for I, ten gigs in Canada, it's like a hundred dollars. I was paying for that probably about sixteen bucks a month. Yeah. when I left the UK, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, because what happens? I mean, that would have started off being about like thirty, forty bucks a month, but then you get a lot. Basically, you get a loyal. Yeah, you know, your your fee goes down over time as yeah. you stay loyal to the same brand. <laughs> so, I've, I've been with Bell for thirteen years. Have never got a reduction. Have never gotten anything for free. Have never gotten anything. My fee just went up as a matter. There you go. <laughs> I so, was actually doing some research yesterday uh, for our FM license application in mm-hmm. terms of demonstrating what the cost of data is yeah. in the north. And yeah, the the minimum I could reasonably find for a one person plan with a gigabyte of yeah. data was about ninety five bucks a month. You could yeah. get it for eighty on occasional special deals. Yep. Yeah. But but to, and then to have like any kind of data that would allow you to do anything, like yeah. let's say five gig, which is really not for the rest 40 of the bucks. world. For the rest of the world, that's a pittance. Yep. For Canada, it's seen as being a large amount each mm. month. Like they're looking at like one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty dollars a month plus, which is yeah, it's it's easily five to six times what you would be paying in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Do we so, know why that is? Uh, size infra- of the country, infrastructure. Mm, yeah, okay. Infrastructure, that would have been size my of the country, guess, the, but uh, disparate population and all that. Them, right? Um, so, I mean, it's it's that's a real it, again. That's a really nice story. I'm happy that worked out for Jelaine. I imagine it hasn't worked out as, as similarly for other people. Um, and that's, I mean, and yeah, and I hope other people don't take advantage of it. But the yeah. bigger issue would be make your data more affordable so people don't go over their data all the month. Yeah, uh, every month. Because they make more money off of data overages than they do over data packages. The problem with that is if, if infrastructure is the reason, then uh, the companies could turn around and say, well, the way this is going to be more affordable is if we don't provide the service to the north because that's the one where we make a loss. Hmm. Uh, yeah, shoot. Uh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> that is nice. And if that, I mean, if anybody else has stories like that to share, then please do because those are things that people uh, who are having mental health issues need to know. Yeah. Those are nice little resources. So that's nice. Thank you for sharing that. See, I didn't make it all negative. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Strange things are afoot at the New Circle K. That's right. Right across from the uh, CBC there, whatever it's called. Is that what it's called? CBC? CBC? Yeah. yeah. Canadian yeah. Broadcasting blah, blah, blah. Company? Company, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Company of broadcasters who are Canadian. Uncle Lauren works there. Uncle Lauren does work there. Did you know that? I, I did. I know that. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> what do you think I'm listening to every morning? <laughs> Wait. Um. So... The Max, or the Winx, whatever you want to call it, is now the Circle K. Yeah. The Shell Store, still the Shell Store. That's the original Circle K here in Yellowknife, so I am confusterated. I don't know where my Circle K is supposed to be, because I still call the Shell Store the Circle K. Right. Has it been that way in 20 be, years? used to be an okay economy before it was a Circle K. No. Well, no, take no. that up with Eric, who no, you messaged are, us at the weekend. You're wrong. <laughs> well, he was wrong never a, me. Eric who? Uh, he Eric Chalker lives in Yellowknife. Uh, he's got a photo of him here 
with the uh, the winks with the owl. He actually has yeah. managed to like find the old sign. The old sign, nice, um, yeah, yeah. And, and is hanging out with it. And he says, yeah, back in uh, 1992, Shell was an okay economy. No, it point. wasn't. Okay. Oh, okay, I thought you were making a joke. No, no, it, okay. Head. What is that? Was, was a uh, uh, no frills uh, grocery store. Oh, and the Circle K was never an okay economy. Eric, thank you very much for that information. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, the okay economy was where the uh, Lulu's is. That's where the okay economy was. Oh. And then it was a real Canadian superstore. And then it was something else, just like the Walmart used to. Yeah, a real Woolco. Canadian superstore. Here. We did. Wow. Yeah, it lasted I don't know, a couple of years, maybe. Huh. Um, then you know the Woolco, uh, Walmart used to be a Woolco. The brick used to be a San. Remember San? I do remember San. S A A N. Save. Yeah. And also, acquire nonsense. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> save and acquire nonsense. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Um, so yes, the OK economy was right next to it in the big building. Um, the the Shell store, which was the Circle K, has been there for years and years and years. I can't remember the year it didn't. It wasn't Circle K anymore. But I'm thinking like ninety seven or ninety eight. Mm. Uh, about twenty years uh, because there was a band in high school. Um, uh, in my high school, named uh, uh, they were called Spritz Up. Spritz up. And they had a song about Circle K. <laughs> of and Cody Fennell was in that band, so was Carla Gilday. So for all right. Leela Gilday fans, that's her sister. And they were going to go far, but then they got sued for copyright infringement. No, no, no. It was no. like a no-name It was a no-name pop. No one cared. No-name. Um, Spritz up was the bomb. All right. <laughs> Grandpa, Just... tell us again about that time there was a Dairy Queen in Yellow. <laughs> oh, okay. okay so. so right next to it, next to the Copper House, which they still have the takeout window at the Copper House, which I started to use, was originally a Dairy Queen and a Donut King. That's donut originally what King. It was. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what a Donut King was. Yeah, I've never uh, heard but of that. that didn't that didn't last, and then it became a Mary Brown's chi- t- uh, Mary Brown's Chicken, which also didn't last. Speaking of Donut King. Uh, I forget now why I was looking this up. Oh, I was just, yeah, I was looking at places to go and eat and places to go and see. Uh, looking for I'm donuts. Down, when looking I'm down for south next week, there is, there is one place in Manitoba called Dairy King. Yes, there is. And, they, and they've gone no. away with it. Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. just a little ice cream shack That's next right. to a golf course in yeah. a tiny, tiny village. Where's that? And um, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to look I've, I've heard of this, and I can't remember where it is either. Yeah. Huh. They also fly a straight, straight pride flag above them. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> no, they don't. Dairy Queen? What about Dairy King? Just, that's what it sounds like. I'm, I'm amazed they have got this far without receiving some kind of cease and desist. But there they are. Nah, they, they have a big sign that says, the home of the ice cream sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it was invented. Uh, well, the patriarchy and all that, right? Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. See, I, I, I mean, if, if something like that tried to become a, a, a franchise, then I would get Dairy Queen like stepping in, but it's not as if Dairy King in a small village in Manitoba is stealing any business from Dairy Queen. Do you know how hard it is to run an ice cream shop? Yes, I do. His kingdom is very small, very little <laughs> very, territory. Very small. Yeah. Not the, queen, very... the Queen really got the better deal out of the divorce <laughs> settlement, if we're honest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like I get this one shop. She gets like shops across the country jeff okay. bezos with his new uh his oh, new God. his new dairy king emporium yeah he's still like top three richest people yeah he's not doing too bad he's easy. fine he's all right i gotta look for this dairy king now i'm really right? intrigued yeah. yeah yeah i'm gonna guess carberry manitoba i'm gonna guess steinbach oh um, very so nice. circle Good k it, with their new logo which is very much like their old one is now where the winks slash max used to be uh, right, right, for, uh, right uh, next to uh, After Eight. So strange yeah. things afoot in Yellowknife. Everything old is new again. Oh, you and had something. Oh, I just, that was a great out. But then you looked at me. <laughs> Sorry, I, I looked at you only because I had established where Dairy King is. Sorry, it's oh. not in Manitoba. It's in Sask. Oh, oh definitely that makes a straight way more flag. sense. Yeah, yeah, and, definitely a straight pride flag. In and I worry that they're going to sue. Uh, uh, where so is it? He's joking. Sue who? Uh, yes, for what? <laughs> that. Be what? smirching uh, the name of the king. Be yeah. smirching the king. Uh, <laughs> you surf. It's in Swift Current. Oh, Swift Currents. Oh, Swifty Currents. Okay. All right. All right. It's that's in uh, Swifty. That's not that small and, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, relatively uh, unknown to place. I, I mean, but there's probably a Dairy Queen there. Probably, yeah. Probably two. I would have to think. Hot Eats. Maybe they Dairy, go to war. Cool treats. Dairy King <laughs> and Mini Golf. And mini oh, okay. Golf. Done. Let's go. We're Let's going go. to Swift Current. Yeah. Morning's at the cabin. <laughs> travels to Swift Current. We're going to Instagram the entire thing and get there for disappointing ice cream sandwiches and <laughs> lackluster mini golf. The Morning's at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Be 
Morning to the Kevin Wheeler Lecture with you on your Tuesday morning. A uh, great segue into the question I'm going to ask you, Lecture. What bands have stuck around maybe just a little bit too long? That was Motley Crue at Rock in Rio. Whoo. I honestly, so you were listening to that I a was. few minutes ago during the break, yeah. and I came in and I thought you were watching some parody. Like video the, Mupp- of the Muppets Crue. do it or something. Yeah, or like someone doing it on Saturday Night Live or something like that, like like Jimmy Fallon doing a, a Vince Neil impression. Although Jimmy Fallon would do a better Vince Neil impression. I think he would too. Vince Neil sounds. Looking for another good time. My heart. <laughs> My heart. Yeah. Ready. <laughs> Oh, he just <laughs> okay. So this oh. happened to Guns N' Roses as well. Like now, now, Guns N' Roses, like they took when he first came back, uh, when he had like Buckethead and all that stuff. Axel, he kind of right. sounded like that. And now they took some time off, got the original lineup back together, and then last year did a tour that is the second mo- highest grossing tour in the history of tours, right? Which is insane because I never had one inkling of going to any of those shows. Ever. Uh, and Guns N' Roses growing up, they were my favorite band. Right. Absolutely my favorite band. Mm. And it's just, no. Just, no. I don't, know. I can't, I can't. I mean, there's there's a few bands who have, yeah, gone past their expiry yeah. date. Uh, but one, can still put on a decent show. Well, and the most notable, of course, one that was going to be going on tour, but it's been delayed due to health issues. <laughs> the Rolling Stones. Due to the fact that Mick is 80 <laughs> and has 18 kids. And just had one like a couple of years ago. You need to take some. You need to take some time off. You, you know, need to spend it with your kids. And Mick learned some time, I think, in like the late eighties, maybe early nineties. That it's like you know, if, if part of your shtick, arguably the biggest part of your shtick, is the energy you bring and to be running around and dancing yeah. the whole time, entertaining the crowd. Just, just stop trying to hit different notes. Yeah, just sing the, the whole song Absolutely. in have, the same notes. Have some great backing backing vocals, which it sounds like uh, Vince does here. He's got a couple of really really buxom ladies just kicking <laughs> kicking the crap out of kickstart my heart in the background but their mics are turned down <laughs> and vince's is turned way up and like nothing against vince neal man like they like motley crew rocked in the day i never liked them but they did uh, absolutely they're legendary for for their par- partying prowess and how hard they would rock a show and several and of them died. Several of them and died. Lived to tell about it. That's exactly right. Died for a long time and still here. Um, Vince pushing it. Like I mean, he's in his fifties. That's fair, yeah. right? He's not in the best of shape. Also fair. Yeah. Like fine. And that then maybe you don't try that to voice think kickstart hard my heart. Too. Well, <laughs> if there was ever an argument for for lip syncing. It's just too much. It's just too much money out there. Like oh, they're, they're, they're getting I mean, paid yeah. way too much. Yeah, you're getting paid so much that you are actively going out on stage and sounding like a a chew toy, a dog chew toy <laughs> has lost its squeaker. It's it's a it's a shame. It's a shame because like that's what you like if you saw the crew back in the eighties or the or the Guns Guns N' Roses back in the eighties and you're like yeah. it was one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. I, right. It was like life changing. Right. And then you're like in your fifties. And you want to bring your kid to see Motley Crue's like, this is the band that dad watched when he was younger. This changed my life. I met your mother at one of these shows. The reason you uh, you exist is because of Vince Neil. And then he sees this. And you're like, dad, I, I think I'm going to file for emancipation. Dad, I'm starting to rethink my entire life. <laughs> and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's good. Maybe it is. Maybe he's like, I you know what? Know. I'm going to go into computer engineering and I'm never going to talk to you again. And maybe that's what's best for him. Could be. That's all. You know what? I don't want to be a rock star. <laughs> that seems like an awful idea. Maybe that's why he brought him. Thanks, he Dad. Brought, he brought him. It's like, you're going to watch this, and you're never going to want to be in music again. So here uh, it is. Thanks to Motley Crue, I want to be an actuary. <laughs> an actuary. <laughs> oh, what's an actuary? Uh, uh, look it up. you got to be really smart. All right. To the Looking for another good time. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca.